<laughs> Men and women live very different lives in the country of Afghanistan. I made sure of one thing on my Afghanistan trip. I told my guide I want to be where the Taliban are. I want to meet them, I want to talk to them, I want to have conversations, I want to ask them questions. I'm not afraid of them. There's just so much I want to know, and I want to ask them directly. Core memory unlocked. I got to meet and get my photo taken by one of Afghanistan's most famous photographers, which in his 50 years of taking photos has never been allowed to photograph women until now. Being that foreigners, especially women, don't come to Afghanistan and tour it, word got around very fast about my being here. They said, this girl, she's a skydiver. She knows how to ride a bike and she travels the world alone. Taliban wanted to meet me, so we decided on a safe space where a lot of people could come out and meet me and take photos with me at a Taliban hangout spot where the Taliban had come to hang out and recruit. One of the most meaningful days of my life was the day I got a call that this school in Bamyan wanted to meet me. They had been showed my skydiving videos by the Taliban and told about me and just couldn't believe it. I made sure to tell them where to focus on the women that were told to sit in the back who actually aren't technically supposed to be getting an education in this country to keep hope alive and anything is possible. His name is Shohaib. Muhammad. Zul Fiqar. Kamal. Kamal. Yasin. Wahid. Wahid. Aryan. The youngest one is Aryan. On one of my days in Kabul, one of the locals wanted his kids to come see me. When they came out, I said, You have all sons? And he says, No, I have a daughter. And I said, Go get her now. When she came outside and I told her to stand in front of the guys, I wanted her to be the center of the picture. She broke down in tears. It's a difficult situation trying to tell people what's right and what's wrong. I realized during my trip to Afghanistan that America and Afghanistan are just the opposite of two very extremes. Nonetheless, there's something to be said about a country that is so poor, but no one would let me spend my own money. And he gives it free for you. He doesn't receive your money. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He will give it for free for you. No. Free? Yeah. You are in Afghanistan. <laughs> mm. I you are okay. I'm in Afghanistan. Hello, I'm most welcome in Afghanistan, especially in Bamiyan. Also, I'm very happy. Also, I'm happy to see you. Day three in Afghanistan, I decided I was comfortable enough to wear color. My guide advised me against this, but I felt comfortable enough to make my own decision and put on color. According to Taliban, women should only wear black and cover themselves as much as possible and not even be outside, but women are starting to stand up for themselves and make their own decisions and express themselves more so I felt comfortable enough to do the same. Did I run into Taliban? Of course I did. What did they say about my color? They told me how much they loved my clothes and how beautiful I looked in traditional Afghani clothing. Day three started with a quick breakfast at our hotel in Bamyan, and then early in the morning we head toward Mazar Sharif. In total, the drive would take 15 hours, 
with five of those hours spent crossing the Hindu Kush mountains. This, without a shadow of a doubt, was one of the scariest drives of my life. To cross the Hindu Kush mountains, it's going to take you about five hours. Five hours of hell. I couldn't relax. I couldn't fall asleep because all I kept thinking about is how are these cars staying on this mountain? It wasn't making sense to me. Every few hours, you would get a tunnel like this, made by the Russians when they were occupying Afghanistan in the 70s. The tunnels were made for landslides or mudslides or falling rock, I was told. But I still had so many more questions. Like, how is this possible? <laughs> These tunnels would go on for hours and hours. And sometimes we couldn't even see right in front of us in the tunnel because it was filled with dust, debris, snow. But we always managed to make it out on the other side. Crossing this mountain during a snowstorm was no joke. Even the driver, which was my guide's brother, was scared. He was saying to me how he never crossed this mountain with this much snow before. We couldn't see directly in front of us, which is pretty scary in a country where there's no road signs, there's no lights, there's no uh, road rules even. So. This is what we were dealing with. In and out of tunnels, in and out of tunnels, on the craziest road of my life. Of course I wanted to get out and look at this beautiful mountain with my own eyes. Terrifying, but beautiful. I was looking for mountain lions or snow leopards. It was surreal being in the real Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan. So beautiful, but so terrifying. We eventually made it across the mountain and stopped for lunch in a not so clean place, but we were hungry. In Afghanistan, you eat on the floor and you eat with your hands. So. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> we had about four more hours of driving before we would arrive in Mazar Sharif. To my hotel in uh, Mazar Sharif, and I can barely speak because I'm just that tired. This was one of the craziest travel days of my life. No, it wasn't. It was just driving, and I was just sitting in the back seat. But altogether, it was about a 16-hour drive from Bamiyan to Mazar Sharif, and. When I tell you, you could not even, we could not even see in front of us. Like, you, we couldn't see anything, nothing. And we're on the side of the, uh, what's it called? Hindu Kush mountain with all these trucks, no road signs, no left and right lane, cars coming both ways. It was so crazy. And you know, you're, in a situation when even the driver is worried, like even the driver, our driver was like, okay, this is not good, you know, I was like, that's great. And one good thing is that they told me, take your money and hide it with us. So we took my money and hid it underneath like a carpet in the car because they said that um, a lot of the Taliban here are kind all the ones i've encountered have been kind he said but the ones on the way to where we're going 
they like money the head guy likes money so he said hide your money because if he sees your money he might take some <laughs> so we hid my money but it's funny because because of the snowstorm the Taliban went home <laughs> so we didn't even have the checkpoint which is cool uh, so I didn't have to worry about that but I wasn't worried uh, so yeah I'm so happy to be here and as you can see very tired Assalamu alaikum Dian Zam Sorry okay Okay Zma urur tu relay, de ba mian asta ragale? Zma milma la amrecau sa. Numi Marida. He's my friend and the commander of this area. Hi, it's really. The first morning in Mazar Sharif, the commander, meaning the top Taliban of Mazar Sharif, wanted to meet me. Him and about seven other guys I wasn't allowed to photograph or film wanted to come meet me and ask me a few questions. They left it at that and I agreed. They ended up asking me what I felt about Afghanistan. How did I feel I was treated? How did I feel about how people treated me? How did I feel safety wise? And what did I think about the difference between Taliban rule and when the US was here? Century. Before the ninth century. Yeah. Okay. In ninth century. Yeah. Muslims built is it like a mosque and use it as a mosque. Okay. From ninth century till now. And right. One of the oldest mosque. Right, and it used to be for Buddhists. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got. This. Oh, okay. Yeah. That during the uh, rain and then. Right. This is the tomb of the guy who walked from uh, Afghanistan all the way to Saudi Arabia. He's an important man. Come and speak to me one on one. Obviously, my translator translated, but he said he wanted to know what I thought about Taliban. Um, and their influence as far as I've been, been experiencing it here in Afghanistan which I thought was really cool that he wanted to know he drove all the way here just to meet me and he wanted to know what I thought about Afghanistan with the Taliban ruling it which I think is so cool he was genuinely interested he said ask her what does she think about us right now he said we were different 25 years ago the Taliban was different 25 years ago, but now they're trying to uh, make a change in Afghanistan, which I think is so cool. After talking to the Taliban for about an hour about what I loved and didn't love so much about Afghanistan, the head commander decided to give me a soldier. He said, you know you're perfectly safe here in Afghanistan. Nobody will touch you. Nobody will hurt you, but I want to give you one of my soldiers, just in case. The soldier that joined us for the rest of the day was one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. We stopped at several shrines. This was one of them. This is the shrine keeper. He's a man who lives in this house right here you're looking at. And he is a keeper of the shrine. I gave him some money just because I was visiting his house and wanted to contribute. And he uses it to go buy food around the corner. We spent the rest of the day touring Mazar Sharif. We went to see several shrines accompanied by the Taliban who seemed to enjoy it so much. He explained to me that since Taliban takeover, a lot of the Taliban don't have much to do. 
they're quite bored most days, so things like touring their own city through the eyes of a foreigner like me is quite exciting. Our next stop was Seth, Adam and Eve's son's tomb. Oh my goodness. This whole thing? Yeah, this whole the, the tomb of the Sheath. Seth. Seth. We call it Sheath. Seth. Seth. Yeah. Seth. Yeah. You guys, this is the tomb of Seth, oh. Adam and Eve's son. That's insane. Why is it so big? People believe that in the past the humans were really high and big, not that the same of us. So but his body's in there, yeah? Yeah, his body is here. So, is his body big? Yeah. People, people believe that the body of human was bigger. Bigger, yeah, the elementary. Yeah, and we got smaller. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Oh my goodness. Wow. And do you know when he was buried? Yeah. Here is the history of him. information about him, but not his history. Because no one knows about his exact date of his arrival, arrival here. So people say he was a businessman. And he bought the jewelries, the gold and things and sold this. Oh, okay. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay. Mm. And he died in Afghanistan? Yeah. Wow, that is so cool, man. Very cool. There was a story about him. Yeah. It says. <laughs> Although he loved all his sons, but he loved him more than other sons. Really? Different. Really? <laughs> his behavior, his personality was different, mm. not like other sons. Yeah, like Cain or Abel. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is so cool. Sorry? What is the price? Each one is 10 upon it. Okay. I should get one, yeah? Yeah. Okay, do, do another one. <laughs> Everyone is staring at me. Should I get uh Just hold it with my hand? Yeah. Okay. Everyone is staring. He's frying corn with with salt. That's so cool. Hot salt and then it comes out like this. And everyone is staring at me. <laughs> everyone is looking. Yeah. Look at everyone staring at me. <laughs> All these people came to stare at me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. This side too. <laughs> yeah. Maybe no tourists come here, yeah? Hi. Oh hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Every, the whole city came out to to look at me. You guys look, we're here at the Blue Mosque and it's arguably one of the most beautiful mosques here in Afghanistan and look how beautiful it is as you can see, especially because I'm filming myself Oh, a call to prayer Hi, good, how are you? 
have uh, one chips I want to take the picture. Let's it's wait till the man come and give us the shoes because he wasn't the man who received This man them. was in charge of giving us back our shoes. As you can see, he didn't want to give us back our shoes. I don't really know why, maybe he thought they were worth some money. Use the excuse that he wasn't there when we left our shoes, so he didn't really know that they were ours or not. Taliban came along and said, give these people their shoes. And immediately, he gave us our shoes. We stopped by this dove feeding area. You would usually see this area filled with lots of tourists feeding the doves, but all the tourists backed up so they could watch me. <laughs> I didn't mind the watching at all. All people were saying all day every time they met me or saw me was, oh my gosh, a foreigner. It's actually wild that I'm a foreigner touring Afghanistan. It's not normal. After we stopped by my guide's family's house, his mother-in-law's house, and they fed me, they hosted a whole brunch, if you will. They were the sweetest people I've ever met, and we had the most delicious food. My guide is married to his cousin, so his mother-in-law slash his aunt. This was her house, and in Afghanistan, all families live together, so... There were a ton of cousins, aunts, uncles, nephews, children, and all that just joining there to come meet me. You guys, <laughs> I look how I feel, cray cray. Um, I just woke up and yesterday it was like such a crazy day. Um, I woke up in Mazar Sharif and um, I had been hit by a car so um, I went to the hospital. 